Hey, it's Marley from the Energy Boutique with your energy forecast for Wednesday, October 16th. So the moon is in Aries all day. And as we kind of move through the day here today, there's going to be some restlessness. There's going to be some frustration. There's going to be some emotional tantrums, if you will, in order for us to, again, have a new illumination on where it is that we're holding on to old emotions, old thought patterns, old versions of self, because of course, we're in the full moon window. The full moon in Aries will be taking place here on the 17th and the energy building to that particular event needs to make us restless, needs to make us a little bit frustrated in order for the proper type of emotions to rise to the surface, in order for us to release them, to integrate them, to let them go under this full moon energy. So we also have Venus, the goddess of love, beauty, worth, pleasure, and money in the final degrees of Scorpio energy here today, as she will be moving into Sagittarius energy shortly after the full moon in Aries pops off. So again, I'm going to recommend that you listen to the October energy forecast. I'm going to recommend that you download your October energy guide specifically made for your zodiac sign so that you know where these energy shifts are taking place and how they are going to impact your life. We have a relatively quiet day in the cosmos. I say that with a little bit of hesitation just because there are going to be flare ups. There are going to be frustrations and ants in our pants that definitely make us hard to sit with thyself. However, compared to some of the energies that we've already experienced thus far this week, seven different aspects. That is a relatively calm day in comparison to the 12 to the 11 to the 17 that we've already had pop off here this week. So again, I'm going to recommend that you listen to the Ascension forecast for this week, especially seeing as we are moving into this very potent energy where again, the full moon in Aries popping off and Venus shifting out of that Scorpio energy into Sagittarius energy will likely fester some Ascension symptoms within us. So over of the seven different aspects that we have popping off here today, six of them are going to involve the moon. Now, the only aspect that doesn't involve the moon is between Mercury and Neptune. Now, we're going to have Mercury, ruler of the mental plane, ruler of information, communication, how it is that we express ourselves in this Scorpio energy, again, using our intellect and our intuition to kind of do a deep dive, get to the matter, the fact, get to the truth of the matter, if you will. We're bringing things up in order to break things down, in order to come to a complete understanding of where it is that endings and closures need to take place in order for a new beginning to actually have the space to be created, to be manifested, to be brought into this physical realm. Mercury is going to be making a positive interaction with Neptune. Neptune, of course, in his rulership, retrograde in this Pisces energy. Neptune rules over our dreams, our imagination, our fantasy, our spirituality, our intuition. So with this water on water action, which we love, first of all, there's going to be an element where we wash away the negative narrative, the negative perception, the negative hyper focus that we have been sitting in for a very, very long time. Instead, what we're going to be doing is we're going to be focusing on the silver linings, on the new truths, on the new revelations, on the new pieces to the puzzle that we are slowly but surely unpacking in the downloads that we've already received. And Mercury being in, I'm going to call it this likelihood, this likeness, this companionship with Neptune, we are definitely taking a good look at our goals, our visions, our dreams. We are being kind of pulled towards what our intuition wants us to do and pursue. And of course, Mercury still bringing the intellect along. We are trying to kind of add a little bit of logic and practicality to some of the vision, some of the goals, some of the dreams that again, in our inner realm, pulling us into one particular direction. So this is going to kind of have us very sharp in our mental plane, although we could be again, wearing those rose colored glasses and choosing to gloss over some very important details. The Scorpio energy not likely going to allow us to do much of that because we do try to keep it real 
in the Scorpio energy. However, there is this focus on the silver linings. There is this focus on the positive. There is this focus on what we believe we can actually achieve when it comes to the new vision that we actually want to start manifesting. So intuition is strong. Our mental plane is strong. We are gathering information. We are seeing things from a different lens and definitely focused on the things that are working instead of the things that are not. The moon in this Aries energy going to come up to bump into team up with conjunct the north node in Aries energy. That north node, of course, is trying to get us on the right path to reach our soul's mission, our soul's purpose. We have a new version of self that we are bringing online. And of course, we're doing the growing, the healing, the evolving into this new version of self. But of course, that north node means that we're essentially sitting across the street from the South node. And we know that that South node is in Libra energy because we just had that South node eclipse event, the new moon solar eclipse in Libra that we just had that we're still very much under the influence in. So the South node is trying to pull us back to what is tried, tested, true, what is comfortable, what is familiar, especially where codependent relationships are concerned, especially where it is that we allow other people to get in our head, other people's thoughts, opinions, perspectives on what we need to be doing in our own lives. We put too much weight into that. We should be putting that behind us. This is what all these eclipses for the last year and a half have been about, which is detaching, breaking away from the thoughts, the opinions, the perspectives, the weight that we allow other people to actually have in our lives. And we learn to stand on our own two feet and our own personal power and recognize what we need to be doing for ourselves. The moon is then going to make a positive interaction with Jupiter, the planet of growth, expansion, beliefs, abundance, and blessings, who, of course, is retrograde in Gemini energy. Again, a reflection inward, a reflection back. We're taking a good look at old ideas. We're taking a good look at old conversations that we essentially swept under the rug. We are challenging the information and knowledge that we thought we knew, that we thought we were using, that we thought we were integrating. We're reviewing the tough love life lessons that we've already gone through and seeing where it is that we can pluck out some of that wisdom and integrate it into the present moment, into the here and now so that we don't make the same mistakes again. The moon making this positive interaction with Jupiter is bringing in a lot of optimism, but with that, a little bit of a manic type of energy. Again, with the moon in Aries, we're kind of bouncing around like a pinball machine. We have an excess of inner energy that we have to give a healthy channel, healthy outlet in order for us to not explode into a million different pieces. But there is this, let's call it restlessness, this impulse, this urgency to want to start fresh, to want to take action, to want to make moves. But we're not in the type of situation and circumstance to do that. Again, we're in a closure chapter. The only initiation, the only moves, the only actions that we are taking are to close the door on the past. And so although this is giving us a magnification on where it is that we are shifting our inner realm, especially where our mental plane is concerned, especially where that inner dialogue is concerned, especially expanding upon some of the ideas that, again, we are now revisiting, there is this optimism, there is this confidence, but there's also this over-exaggerated estimation of our abilities, of our capabilities, of what we actually believe that we can accomplish. Now, not to say that it's not good to have hope and faith and, you know, push ourselves to try. But again, when we bite off more than we can chew, most times, often than not, we end up a little bit overwhelmed and disappointed. The moon is then going to semi-square, creating a little bit of tension and conflict with Uranus, the Great Awakener, who is retrograde in Taurus energy. This is going to bring on a little bit of confusion, a little bit of rebellion, if you will, a little bit of that warrior type of spirit that just wants to kind of lash out to anything and anyone that is preventing us from moving on, that is preventing us from actually adopting a different mind space actually putting us in a situation to see where we're blocked, challenged, and limited instead of having the freedom to choose to actually make some progress in a totally different direction. Now, again, this is probably going to fester a lot of anger, a lot of frustration in our inner realm because we are lacking patience. And again, with Uranus now retrograde and Taurus energy, we should be focusing on where it is in our physical realm that we're resisting the changes that we know that we need to make for this new version of self to actually be successful. 
The moon is then going to make a positive interaction with Pluto, the great transformer, who is at the final degrees of this Capricorn energy, giving us the empowerment in order to kind of see where it is that a clean sweep is needed, where we still have to remove people, places and things, old foundations, old structures that the old version of self had built. And where it is that, again, this new version of self no longer resonating with those particular aspects. Now, the moon and Pluto coming together, especially both in cardinal energies, we're ready to boss up. We're ready to reach a new level of authority. We are ready to do what needs to be done in order to clear the space and free up our physical realms for something better to actually be built to actually be created. So this is going to really push us into a new mood and a new attitude to do the hard things that we've been resisting and doing, and really putting us in a situation to again, tie up the loose ends of the past so that we can get started on building a better future. The moon is then going to make a positive interaction with Saturn, the Lord of Karma, who, of course, is retrograde in Pisces energy. This is going to put us in a situation to tap into our intuition, tap into our intellect, realize what is falling apart, what is not strong enough in order to kind of stand the test of times, especially with our belief system, especially with our mental plane, especially with the roles and responsibilities, the commitments, the obligations that we've made to certain roles certain people that, again, we're no longer vibrating with. So emotionally speaking, we have this impulse, we have this urgency, we have these ants in our pants pushing us to see where it is that we need to take action and make moves to clear out the old in order for us to, again, have the space to start building a new foundation and structure that the new version of self and the new wants, needs and desires of that new version of self can actually be built upon. The last thing that we have going on here today is the moon in this Aries energy, making an awkward interaction with Venus, the goddess of love, beauty, worth, pleasure, and money in the final degrees of the Scorpio energy. So Aries energy and Scorpio energy, they have a common ruler, which is Mars. We know that Mars is in Cancer energy, not his most favorite place to be, however, making us hella defensive overly protective, especially when it comes to our emotions. We are in preservation mode, fighting and protecting and defending what it is that we've already built, what it is that we've already created, what it is that we know that, again, needs to change, but we're not willing to change it right now because we would much rather have what is tried, tested, true, comfortable, familiar, predictable in our lives than push us in a state of foreign territory. So this particular interaction, emotionally speaking, we have new passions, we have new desires, we have this new tenacity, we have this new spirit pushing for us to do what we need to do for ourselves, putting ourselves back at the top of the list. Venus, who has been moving through the Scorpio energy, again, doing the shadow work to eliminate the old people, places and things, the old emotions, the old situations and scenarios that have her feeling trapped that have her feeling like she's stuck in the old world that she's built and that she's created, even though she's no longer in alignment with a lot of the things that at one time she very much was. The Scorpio energy, because we're nearing the end of it, the true transformation is coming online. We have a certain depth in our heart space, in our emotional realm that we now are using to push us to do the hard things, which does happen to be the right things to do, in order to clear out the space of the old round, the old reality, this major change, this major transformation is empowering us to do what we need to do for ourselves so that we can create a realm and reality that not only looks good, but that feels good as well.